everyone for coming. I'm Maya Montgomery, and I'd like to tell you about my project, Honors Automata Language Theory, including Navigable Graphics. So this mouthful is the title of the application that I designed and developed this semester. It's halting for short, because every computer science invention needs an acronym, and if you don't get the reference of this one, please feel free to Google the halting problem after this presentation. This application is basically a graphical finite automata simulator. So I wrote this in Java, packaged it up for users as a runnable jar file, um, and it can be used on Mac OS, Windows, Linux, just as long as you have a fairly up-to-date version of Java. So first, a little background on how this project came about. The goal of Halting is to be an educational tool. So for example, it could be used in the classroom, like in 210, which is a applied theory here, uh, a class in which I spent a lot of time drawing kind of automata by hand. And um, if we ever had to end the lesson partway through, then Professor Decker would have to spend a good portion of the next class redrawing the entire automaton. So I'd hope to make something useful for professors or students, anyone studying CS language theory. On a more personal level, I wanted to use this project to practice certain skills for post-graduation. For example, I found during my job search that Java is in really high demand, uh, and so I wanted to expand my portfolio in that language. I also learned the basics of using Eclipse, and all of the code, resources, uh, the JAR file, it's all stored on my GitHub. In general, what I wanted to do this semester was a lot of programming because coding is what I really love to do, and um, I was so happy to be able to just spend a lot of time programming this semester. So now I'd like to go over what will be review for probably a lot of you, uh, but it's important to know the basics of what a finite automaton is. It's also called a finite state machine, and it's a, it's a concept used in computational theory for defining basically patterns of character strings in some alphabet. When you create an automaton, you define its pattern. And then when you give it an input string, the machine can determine whether or not that string fits its pattern. A machine has a finite number of states, which are sort of like statuses. It starts in one predetermined state, and it has zero or more except states, which I'll explain in a minute. The machine can only be in one state at a time, and it changes states based on a set of transitions or, or rules that have been defined. So every transition specifies a starting state and a character of input and a target state. So the machine will read one character from an input string, and then if a transition exists from the, the machine's current state on that current character, then the machine will transition to the defined target state. Now if the machine, once the machine has finished reading an entire string of input that way, if the state that it ends up in, its final state, is an accept state, then that string is accepted by the machine. Otherwise, it's rejected. So I'll show you a very simple example here. This is um, a pretty typical representation of a finite state machine. We have three states, which are the circles, and the start state here is Q0. So the arrow going from Q0 to Q1 represents a transition and the A in the middle of that arrow is the input character. So if our input to this machine is an A, then we transition from Q0 to Q1. The bold outline in Q1 indicates it's, it's an accept state, and so that string is accepted. But on a B, we would move from Q0 to Q2, which is not an accept state, so the string would be rejected. So now that I've gone over a little bit of background reminding you what finite automata are, I'll summarize the development process from this semester. First, I implemented a pretty simple automaton class. Uh, every automaton instance is tracking a bunch of states, and every state instance is keeping track of transitions. I got a basic text-based uh, automaton backend working in a week or two at the start of the semester. So then I moved on to the real bulk of the project, which was building the front end, connecting that to the back end, and continuing to develop features. Uh, I wrote the GUI using the Java Toolkit Swing, and originally I tried out this Eclipse plugin called Window Builder, which is a graphical GUI designer in that Window Builder is a GUI, 
that lets you graphically design the components of your desired GUI, and then it generates Java code for you, just the skeleton code to produce the GUI. But unfortunately, it was pretty buggy on my machine. I couldn't really get it to work. So I abandoned that idea and uh, soon just decided to write everything from scratch. So what did I actually manage to develop this semester? Well, Hall team can build, modify, and run deterministic finite automata. It looks the same as in the example that I showed you. So there's circles for states, arrows for transitions, etc. And once you've built a machine, you can run on input in two different ways. One, you can just display the end result, which is if the machine accepts or rejects the string that you gave it. Or two, you can step through the input one character at a time and watch the machine transition from state to state. You can also save and load automata, which is one of the features that I prioritized as soon as I had a, all the basic functionality working, because it's really convenient. You lay out your automaton with all the states, however you want it, and once you've figured out the best layout and you've built everything, you can save it and load it later, and there's just no redrawing necessary. So now that I've told you about it, I'd like to show you a brief demonstration of Halkin in action. So let me switch this screen so you can see. All right. So here is what it looks like. This is, this is halting. It's just an executable jar file. So I'll double click on this to run it. And this is what it looks like. And I imagine the text is a little small, especially for those of you in the back. So I'm going to set the font size here a little bigger. And please bear with me, because I added this feature last night. <laughs> so it's a little buggy. All right. <laughs> Thanks. So hopefully that's a little better. So, oops, did not mean to do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so this is what it looks like. Um, the part on the right here is the canvas, which is where the machine actually is going to show up. And on the left is all the tools that you need. So first I'm going to just build um, the example automaton that I showed you in the presentation. So I need three states. Um, actually, I'm going to start a new one here since it's going to be renaming these states. I would like to start from Q0. So I need to click three times to make those three different states. And Q0, I'm going to right click and edit it. And that pops up this window here to edit the different properties of this state. So first of all, Q0 needs to be a start state. So I'm going to select yes on this radio button. And then it needs two transitions. It needs a transition on A to state Q1, and I need the transition on B to state Q2. And I save that. Now you can see Q0 is selected because as the start state, it's the current state of the machine, and the transitions popped up automatically, so that's the arrows there. And one more thing, we need to edit Q1 to make it an accept state. So that's this other set of radio buttons here. So I'll hit yes on that, and you can see it's got the bold outline now. So that's it. That's the example automaton that I showed you. Uh, it was actually faster to make it just now than it was to make it in PowerPoint. And you can do a little more with this. So first I'm going to try running this on a B. So I'll enter B in the text box over here and hit run. And it was rejected, like it should be. So you can see that by the, the final state's coloring is red to show it's rejected. And there's also this label down here at the bottom that says status rejected. If I reset the machine and I run it on an A instead, and that's been accepted. Green for accept. Um, so I might like to use this machine again later. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to file save. Um, put it in documents, sure. I'll just call it AB. And that's been saved. You can, I don't know if you can see, but the file's right here. It's been saved. So now I'm going to open up a slightly more complicated machine that I built earlier. And see that this one also has three states, but it's got more transitions. So you can do some more things with this one. Um, so Q0 still goes to state Q1 on an A, but Q1 transitions back to Q0 on either a B or a C. So there's two transitions here. 
And we've also got Q2 with Y and Z. So I'm going to show you how to step through input. I'm going to do A, B, A, B, Y. So if I hit the step forward button, you can see down here, we just read an A. It tells you which character was just consumed. And then Q1 is now selected because we've transitioned to that state. So as I keep selecting step, we continue consuming input and watching the machine transition. And finally, we read the Y, which is the last character. And so we've ended up in Q2, and that's not an accept state, so the string has been rejected. So a few more features um, of the application. You can step backwards, so I can go all the way back to the beginning here. That's, I don't know, in case you step forward before you meant to and you want to take a step back. You can, let's see, you can move the states around uh, to organize them however you like. So you can click and put them places, or you can click and drag, and they will update in real time. <laughs> if you run the machine on, um, if you give the machine some input character where there's no transition defined for it, like two, there's no transitions here for two, so I try to run that and I get a pop-up error message letting me know this is what the problem is. You don't have a transition defined starting at the start state on this input two. If I were to delete this start state here, you notice the, the transitions are gone, of course, because state Q0 doesn't exist anymore. If I try to run it now, it lets you know there's just there's no start state defined. You can't do anything with this automaton. Uh, I'll also show you what it looks like when a state transitions to itself, because that's a thing that can happen. So what is this, Q2? It'll point to itself like that. And lastly, if there's anything that you're not sure how to do, I do have a user's manual under file help. Um, so that kind of breaks down the, pretty much what I'm showing you here. How do you build an automaton? How do you run it? Uh, it's got screenshots and things like that. So yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to show you here. So I'm going to go back to the presentation now. Okay. Great. So now that uh, you've seen a bit of what Halting can do, I'm going to talk about some of the obstacles that I ran into this semester while developing it. Um, one of the really big ones was transition arrows. Drawing those arrows from state to state was really difficult. Uh, here's the basic steps of what you have to do. You need to calculate the coordinates of either end of the arrow, somewhere along the circumference of those state circles. And you need to then, uh, the two lines that make up the arrowhead, you need to draw those, you need to calculate its coordinates based on the angle of the arrow. And then you need to place the input character at the midpoint of the arrow, but not on top of the arrow. So this might seem doable if you like math, which I don't. Uh, but if you get past all of that, it, there's, there's a lot of things to consider here. There's a lot of details. So for example, if Q0 transitions to Q1, but Q1 also transitions to Q0, they're pointing to each other. You don't want those arrows to overlap. There needs to be some kind of offset. And what about states transitioning to themselves? What about if you have multiple transitions from one start state to another target state? Um, so these are all things that I had to consider. And to summarize, it took a while to figure all of this stuff out. Uh, a more general obstacle I had was the user experience. So this is a graphical application. Of course, the user interface is a critical part of what I was working on. So a challenge with that is that you have to plan for every possible action and every possible step in the application. So it's like trying to think of dozens of edge cases, basically. For example, what if a user um, hit the step forward button to start stepping through some characters on a machine and then decided they want to hit the run button? What should you do in that situation? So in this example, I chose to disable the run button once you've started stepping through the machine. S 
similarly with user error, you have to think of all the ways that somebody could mess up, either maliciously or otherwise, and try to have helpful, um, try to develop, design your application so that the user has the best experience possible, which means error messages, for example, useful error messages. So I showed you um, the error messages for no transition defined and for no start state. These are the sorts of details that I had to try and make sure I was covering all the bases for. So what's next? The semester is over, but I do plan to continue development on whole team. And uh, I'm not gonna read through this entire list, but I'll touch on a couple of these. Right now, like I said, whole team can handle deterministic finite automata. I would love to be able to handle non-deterministic ones as well, but this involves a lot more designing first. Uh, it's not easy to just add those in. For example, one thing you have to consider is, do you show a user all the possible paths that a machine could take on a given input? And this brings us back to the halting problem, actually. Would I want to parallelize running an NFA? Probably. Um, if the machine does accept a given input string, do you want to just pick one of the paths, one of the possible universes that accepted it and show that to the user? It's just a lot of decisions that you have to make before you even start getting to the implementation of it. So that's a, one of the larger goals that I have. Uh, I'd also like to be able to intelligently auto-arrange states in a machine, um, which will require some graph theory studying. Uh, basically, that will, the goal there is to produce the neatest layout possible. Um, so you have to analyze all the states and their transitions to each other and figure out somehow what is the best way to lay out all these states? Um, also things like user customization, like I showed you with the font size, that's something that I've added in um, that needs some more development at this point. But I want to add as many different features as I possibly can to make this the most convenient application for users, because that's the goal, of course. So if you have any suggestions for a feature, or if you have a question, or if you download Hall Team from my GitHub and you find a bug, then please feel free to contact me. Um, I would love to hear from you. And I'd like to thank you all for listening today, and I'd be happy to take any questions at this point.